So this is the Fall of Saigon, um, which is expansion for Fire in the Lake. An upcoming expansion. Yes. This so, is the so import we're, test. So we're running testing. that. We're running that, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, uh, everybody. Hi. Hold on. Hi, this this is, is the expansion. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this covers 73 to 75. The game typically ends in 70, 72. Two. Yeah. Okay. It, it covers. It ends. The original game ended from in the Paris Peace Accords. This game now extends it beyond the Paris Peace Accords of the fall okay. of Saigon. Okay. Yeah. What a title, huh? <laughs> As the Americans are pulling out, right? They're they're leaving choppers from the base or from the. No, that's the end. That's a that's, that's the, the very end. end. That's the so very end. It's like we're trying to get out. Okay. All right. So, with all that in mind, you'll see some extra bits and pieces like some plastic tanks, not included in the game. But there will be tanks in the game, there will be wooden pieces. Wooden pieces. Yes. I, I, and I didn't paint them, so the green tanks are really yellow, but, you know, forgive me. But yeah, there's it's a lot a of... Test. <laughs> there's yeah. a lot I, of... I actually finished... Stuff. Volko was sending me the last files at 7.30 in the morning on Sunday, and I left my house at 8. So I was cutting out, <laughs> I was sending out these cards as, as I'm trying to get to the, you know, get in my car and get here. So yeah, it was nuts. But what, what's, what's, what can we expect in this? There's a lot of pieces on the board. Okay, so let me explain what's going on here. So, uh, a year, right after I saw you guys at WBC, mm -hmm. I had some uh, medical stuff that had to happen. Luckily, it all turned out very well, but it was, you know, crazy time. And as a consequence, I didn't know how the, the surgery was gonna go, so I had four games to finish, and I got three of them done just in case. It could have been the last ones, who knew? <laughs> you know, luckily it wasn't. But I, I said, just in case, I better get, I, so it also took my mind off what was going on, so it was actually very therapeutic. But one game didn't make it through the four games, and that was the Fall of Saigon expansion. I recover, my life's crazy, I become a grandfather, you know, all those kind of things happen. And so now, fast forward to last July 1st. Everything's fine, I'm happy. And I go, I was reading this book on Vietnam, I go, wait a minute, wasn't I doing an expansion? <laughs> so I pull up my computer, and I go, holy cow, I actually finished the expansion, I just didn't know I did. <laughs> so I call up Volko and Gene Billingsley, I said, hey, I can have the final rules to you, the basic rules to you, and I got all the cards, I sent them to Volko, I have everything, I just need three days to finish the rules. So from July 1st to July 3rd, I wrote these rules, Volko started making cards, I started play testing, and on July 21st, which is exactly three weeks after I started, which was the day I drove to WBC, I had a complete prototype of the game. So this will be the fourth playing of it, although the th third playing of this is scenario. So now people go, what's in it? Okay, so first off, it is at its core, Colonial Twilight two-player Fall of Saigon. So it's a two-player game using the Colonial, you know, with Brian Trains, Initiative track. Initiative track from Colonial Twilight, and so you now have an official, so you play 73, 74, 75, NVA versus Arvin, two-player. And the NVA can't win if they don't have a full of Saigon. Yeah. There you go, right? There's the theme. If you want to have theme, there's the theme. Uh, however, Volko and I also wanted you to be able to play from 64 through 75. That's the hard part. So, whereas the original game went from 64 to 72 and ended at the Peace, Paris Peace Accords, we now have the Paris Peace Accords are in the game. So, we're playing what I think is going to be one of the more coolest scenarios. It starts in 72. Um, at the end, the coup card that ends, so using the 68, eight of the 68 cards is the last year of that, you know, that, of, you know, of the 68 cards to 72 cards, play eight cards. When the coup comes out, there's some new stuff, but there is a Paris Peace Accord where decisions get made. Depending on where the board situation is, the U.S. may have to retreat, you know, pull out, is going to stay at war, or has a choice, which brings in a lot of other little... For the NVA and your side, you may decide you're automatically going to stay at war, depending on your score. Um, you're definitely going to be a little bit more, um, you know, uh, ecumenical about the close of this thing, and so that'll cause some interest. You'll, you may be forced to pull out of Vietnam and then keep going, or you have a choice to whether you're going to do it that way. So how the treaty gets written has multiple outcomes, based nine outcomes, well, four outcomes really, nine outcomes based on, you know, that matrix. Once that all done, it's a usual cool round, you get more resources, all that kind of good stuff. We now go into 73. What happens then is where's the U.S. in this thing? So the U.S. can still play even if they withdraw because I can still do advising and training and, some, and there's this posture track and there's a marker, I'll put it on in a minute, 
the U.S. support for the South Vietnamese can goes up and down, and if it gets to four, also the B-52s are back in. <laughs> uh, and the Americans can actually recommit to the war sometimes. So it can be kind of a little crazy. Uh, but the longer the game goes, the, the Americans pick up points by not having lost the war. You know, as long as he, my little brother's alive, I'm gaining points. Mm -hmm. To be clear, we go to the end of 75, you cannot win the game if you don't take Saigon. And then there's a, and if you haven't taken Saigon, there is a final, you know, victory point adjudication, so you could win a Pyrrhic victory. Oh no, you can't win a Pyrrhic, you can't win no matter what if Saigon is a fool, but whether he wins or I wins is based on some other, you know, how I, so I can manipulate it right, even if I'm out of the war, I may be able to have it, he survived and I still win. You know, so, and I'm still, and, and so understand, I, this is now, I played it, this will be the third time playing this scenario, it is, Substant and, and Volko, I'm really sorry, you don't know any of this. So I've been redesigning, <laughs> and it's really a lot better now than it was two days ago. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I do. And then we're going to play test it. And everybody goes, are you going to play test it? No, we're not going to play test it. This is going right to the production on Monday. No, it's it's obviously going to be play test for like a year. This game won't be out for a year because of the production cycles and everything. So we're going to play test the heck out of it. But the good news is everybody's got a set who has the game. You know, a few extra things you can figure out. and. So we'll we'll get lots of play tests again. So this will be the third play test of it. And, and this isn't even on the P five hundred yet. No, nobody even knows about this. Yeah. You do. And yeah, of course right, when you right. put this out, everyone's like, what? Yeah, right. It'll be all, we're gonna it'll be five hundred in August. But I figured well, why keep it a secret? Right. Gene loves those little secrets, he's yeah, always he trying does. to I was like, come on. So <laughs> people going, is this is this what is this? That's not on the P five hundred. No. <laughs> but it will be on the P five hundred in August. So Let's describe the situation. Um, do you have any questions? You know, well, I have one. We, we are controlling Saigon right now. I hope so. If, if they don't control <laughs> Saigon... They can't win the game. They can't win the game. So if we focus on this, regardless of all of that, yep. we, is it a stalemate or we win the game? Well, remember, there's a lot of... Other the, conditions. Yeah, okay, no, no. Okay, but, okay. But that was actually what happened in the real the real world. Remember, this is a history game. I'm, yeah, I'm a history. Gotcha. I'm a historian. Gotcha. Um, what happened was in 1975 is two tried to co to give up the rest of the country to hold the South and Saigon, except that it fell apart and they lost. But that was their strategy. They were, they gave up. They were giving up Wei, Da Nang, Cameron, everything. They were falling back to what you would call third and fourth core and just trying to hang on. And they didn't it, remember because again. So Vietnam is actually three countries. There's Tonkin, which is the north. There's Amman, which is this highland area. And then there's Cochin, Cochin or Cochin, China, which is the south. Although they're all Vietnamese, they're actually pretty distinct dialects. There's different mixes Culture. of, they're culturally different. The Buddhists were very up here. This was very French after this period. Tonkin, uh, in fact, the Prime Minister of uh, Vietnam, Ki, was born in Tonkin. His father fought with Ho Chi Minh, and he, and if he would have been, he would have, instead of becoming the Prime Minister of the, of the uh, Republic of Vietnam, he might have, he tried to get to fight for Ho Chi Minh, but his parents caught him and they spanked him and they put him back in the house. So, that kind of stuff was going on all the time. So, it's a crazy thing. So, Tu, who was a Southerner, was happy, he wasn't happy to, but he realized to hang on, he was willing to give this up because he didn't, it wasn't his, you know. So, it's a, it's, that's why there's four factions in the game, and people go, well, it's not really four. No, like I said, play it the other, any way you want. Yeah. You got lots of options. So, questions, Alexander? The board state. There is a lot of NVA built up, yeah. and a lot of Arvin troops out, very few U.S. Yeah, well, we're always, so, so just so you know, this is actually based on a real water battle. So these two, these two guys, first of the 5th Brigade in the United States. These three cubes, Republic of Korea Tiger Division. These two cubes, that's the third of the first Air Cavalry Division. Those are the last guys in country. That's it. That's it. Uh, the Irregulars, which you see in the cities, they go, well, shouldn't we, we could, and the Irregulars are self, this is the CIA. Okay. So they're not the Mountain Yards now, they're not, I mean, they're not special forces. This is the CIA or, spe, you know, Green Beret types that are advising and training. They're trainers, CIA, whatever. So that's what the American, and they, and they will stay in the game even if the U.S. withdraws. 
Ah, okay. I, you know, the bases are still American bases, but when I withdraw, I I can pull the bases back, but he can throw. He has a couple of bases. He can. I can make switch it a yellow. Out. We can switch them out and begin his base if he wants it. Um, now you said, why is all these guys? So what you're going to find out is you probably gonna, the first thing that's going to happen is that's going to be least offensive. offensive. And so you'll note that um, Grant has you may there may be a base that you missed going on the board somewhere. We'll check that. Okay. But I think you start at nine. You do start at nine. But this base is somewhere. That's why it's nine. Okay, it. You have no control. At right. the end of that card, you sh if you do it well, you'll be at or above your victory condition at nineteen. Okay. That's no pressure. No, no pressure. pressure. But you know. But just saying, I yeah. I built it, and pretty much every one of these three cubes is a division. And I actually know the designation of all the divisions. But you know, this is the three twenty fifth. <laughs> this is the three twenty fourth. This is a 308, you know. So I don't just make this stuff up. So why is the board position? That's where they were, okay. Uh, this is the uh, the first Arvin division. This is the fifth. Oh, actually, this is the fifth. This is the first. Uh, this is the uh, Airborne Marine Brigade. You know, it's all the way it is. Um, what else is going on? So the tanks. Yeah, so the armor doesn't come in until we're done with the first sleeve of cards. And then. You get to bring now. What happens with the armor is there's a new special activity called spearhead, and so tanks allow you to move and attack in the same move, but with the armor and a number of guys equal to two times the number of tanks. So you take one tank. Let's say you you have eight troops and one tank. You can march them in somewhere, but then you can attack with a tank and two troops as like a like an armor column. Yeah, yeah. Think of it that way. You can kill the tanks, but killing a tank's like killing two cubes. So it's you know they're a little bit harder to kill. But they but you can raid them and kill them and all that kind of stuff. Um, what else? Uh, so that's what'll come in later. Um, and then otherwise, it's straight. Oh, and then there's obviously some little tweaks in the activities. Now, once I withdraw, my good friend Dan picks up. U.S. capabilities. So, in other words, he can now airlift and airstrike, but the strength of it is based on that number. So, he can only airlift two guys and airstrike with a strength of two. He doesn't roll dice for that. If I get up to four, he's better. If I get it down to zero, he's not he's so much. Good. The irregulars, um, oh yeah, Vocal, you don't know this. The irregulars can self-deploy. We have heli these guys have helicopters built in, so they can fly around themselves. They don't require. Anytime I want to do advisor train, I can just move them, move them and do it. Move them and do it. So that's all that problem. Like I said, the only way I know how to design is I write the rules, I set it up, I play it, and as I'm playing it, it just morphs very quickly into what's going to be the game. It just takes you about half a dozen play tests and I got it. So I pretty much got this now. Half a dozen play tests to make Empire of the Sun. That's what I just yep. did. <laughs> the design, not the play balance. <laughs> You know, you can't trust the press, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, it, and it looks like uh, the U.S. have the... Um, linebacker. Linebacker, and then the Z's are offensive, and it's presumed that the NBA, uh, the, the VC and the Arvin have played there. And, and this pivotal event is why I never went to Vietnam. That particular one? Yeah, because okay. I turned 18 in November of 1972, and the Vietnamese, North Vietnamese didn't want to talk. Nixon bombed the crap out yeah, of them, the North. and on January 27th they signed the peace accord. Too young to go to Vietnam. Although I would, it, war would have to go a lot. You know, I was only 18. You know, by the time they drafted me and trained me and whatever, it, it could have been at least a, you know, a year, a year or two. Sure. So, but I would have been in the army then. But anyway, so we are ready to begin. Okay, the board looks pretty red. Well, no, that's there. That's. That's Laos and Cambodia. This is North Vietnam. This is South. See the yellow line? Yeah. That's South Vietnam. Okay. So they're not even in the country. Right, right. These okay. are the VC. <clears throat> and so we're ready. Okay. Do you have any other questions you want to ask? Or no. Nope. What we'll do is I think we'll do a wrap up kind of at the end and we can kind of show what, yeah. what happened. In with about it. five hours. <laughs> uh, yeah. Five hours later. So welcome to uh, another video from the theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. Hi. I'm this Grant. Grant. And then we've got Dan Pancaldi from No Enemies Here. And the famous Mark, Mark Herman. Herman. <laughs> I know he's embarrassing. So 
uh, we just sat and played Full of Saigon. 1973-1975. That's an yeah, but we played the 72 to the end of the war scenario. Nice. And it's an expansion for Fire in the Lake, my favorite coin game. Mine as well. Uh, it's a big Vietnam coin game. If you're watching this, you've probably played that. This is WBC, so this is kind of a playtest version. The rules are pretty decently complete. This is the first place it's debuted, actually. Yeah. I only got this finished Sunday morning. I cut the last cards out. And we're only, that was uh, four days ago. And this was the fourth play test you said, or third? This is the third play test of the 72 to 75 scenario. Okay. There was one play test of the two player NBA versus Arvin okay. scenario. So, but it's been, you know, I've been obviously modifying on the fly. This is now at like the 80, this scenario, the game, but the scenario is at the 80% now. But it's got more to go, but I, I, it'll have another year of play testing. So uh, the two-player was a little bit smoother because it was easier to balance even from out of the box. But this has been challenging, and I, I'm enjoying it. But it's like it was a lump of clay. Now we've got like a vase that hasn't been painted yet. Okay. <laughs> so I, the expansion has this two-player. It's NBA versus Arvin, end of the wall. Just and that's a 73 to 75. And that's just charging down to Saigon, trying to get them all out. As you can see, lots of red in here. Yes. And we played kind of the four-player... I almost want to say module that you just tack on to the end of your normal fire in the late game. Is that no, correct? We play so so if you play the campaign game, the game covers the original game, the beginning of the US presence 64 to the Paris Peace Accord 72. So the last end of the game is 68 to 72. We just played 72 Paris Peace Accords the last three years of the war. Okay. There is always a scenario for all anybody who's gonna ask Yes, you can play the whole thing. So you can start in 64 now and go all the way to 75. So we just played the 72 to 75 transition. So that, so I know the campaign will work. This now works. We're in good shape. And to, let's talk about the Paris Peace Accords. Yeah. So that's kind of how the base game ends. Here we've got it fleshed out and it does things. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Put it, so basically, depending on the score of the NDA in the US, and some anti-war stuff depends on how whether the war goes on with everybody in whether the US has to pull out whether the NDA can stay in the war but it's going to cost them war weariness people are not up to it or they're ahead enough that they and it, or the NDA may actually have to write a peace accord where they withdraw from South Vietnam that can be forced so you've got four different conditions uh, where the war keeps going both sides pull back U.S. pulls, but the historical one is the U.S. withdraws and the NDA get to stay in South Vietnam. And then the one that didn't happen is the, we're still gung-ho and they retreat out of Vietnam and the war ends. Yeah, so, so a lot of different outcomes, you know, and, you, and then you continue on from there. And then, so probably a decent amount of the time the U.S. is going to kind of pull out historically and like leave the war. And it looked like there's a there's a lot of changes for the U.S. player. Can we go through some of those? Yeah. So the U.S. player now becomes more of a well, where the U.S. player can still win the game. But the key for the U.S. to win the game is the Arvin can't lose the game. Got to hold on to Saigon, and and so the U.S. score they get points for just keeping Arvin in the war every coup phase. The U.S. now can only train and advise missions. And there's a new posture track, which is right here. So the U.S. basically has like a trail. You know, like the, the Ho Chi Minh Trail acts like the Ho Chi Minh Trail. So the higher the U.S. support, the Arvin now can do airstrikes and helicopter lift, but only equal to the posture level. So I'm trying, and but what's fun about the Americans, you play, you come very event heavy. You're playing the events and then trying to help get money to the Arvin because you want them not to lose. But... At the same time, hopefully they, they ignore the fact that the, you know they haven't knocked down all your support and all that kind of stuff's going on. So it's kind of fun, training and advice kind of stuff. Uh, Events-wise, with this new posture track, I did notice there's a lot of events that affect that, Correct. as well as things like the patronage. I thought there's a lot of events in the new that affect the patronage and just trying to bankrupt or gain more yeah. for uh, no for aid. Uh, well, aid, 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 aid. 
So I, it was interesting seeing, I felt like there was a lot more of affecting these kind of resource yeah. economic trends. And so just to give people a quick history lesson on the support side, so we cut a deal, and the, you know, the Americans cut a deal to get out of the war. Two, who was the, you know, the president of Vietnam for the whole period of this game, the last 10 years, he doesn't want, he says the deal allows the NVA and the DC to stay in place. He's going, that's crazy. Nixon, the San Clemente event, buys them off with aid, so we basically are giving him $2 billion a year in 73. Which keep, and by the way, the Auburn has a competent air force, they have helicopters, they have some tanks, you know, they're a competent force, but then what happens is, you know, America gets tired. And in 74, the Congress cut the budget from $2 billion to $1 billion. And now it's getting, and by the way, all the Auburn casualties have to be paid for to bring them back into the game to so available. So that's costing you money because you got to, you know, you got to equip them and train them and all that stuff. Then in 72 and 75, we cut the aid to 700 million. And that was below the stay alive number. And so the corruption and all that, so now all of a sudden, the army, keeping an army in the field is very hard. And so that's what that's part of the story. And the American is trying, you're acting with the, the Americans who want to stay in the war, so you're trying to keep the aid higher, keep the support longer, to keep them in the war, which is not what happened historically, but you're trying to fight against those currents. So that's kind of that part of the story, you know, Volko and I want to tell. And another thing that the, that the U.S. helped with is arming the the South Vietnamese. We have tanks in this game, as you can see. We have little plastic miniatures, which are a, a kind of a play test piece. Walk there, us there, the there will be there will be war. So the tanks, you get a new special activity called spearhead. So basically, the power of in a coin game in, the, in this game is when the U.S. is in the war, you sweep, then you airstrike. For the uh, Arvin, it's the transport assault kind of mission. So that's the double move. This creates a new um, set of double moves where the tanks, you can march and then you can attack immediately assault where the tank is, but with cubes equal to the tank plus two. So it's like the mechanized infantry that's with the tank. So you can get these limited attacks while dragging a lot of guys along. So it makes the game very dynamic. Yes. I think you saw that. Oh, yeah, and it's a very powerful for whoever's doing it. Yeah. It's, you know, you can run in and just break somewhere or weaken it significantly, hold up, and then start doing some regular assaults as well. Exactly. I, I did find it interesting that the, the tanks were very susceptible to airstrikes as well. Yeah. Well, they're big you, and they're on the road. Yeah. Uh, you, you took out quite a few of my tanks there early on. I had a good two or three built up and they were gone. Yeah. So, and by the way, when I first started working in the Pentagon, we used to have, my, I worked for this office, had all the movies from Vietnam. So, I, first time I ever saw, so, like what happened in the actual war in 75, a lot of the um, Arvin tanks were abandoned, and the U.S. was using helicopters and tow missiles to blow up their own tanks so that the NVA wouldn't capture them. And, you know, and I've seen, you know, tow missile shots, a lot of them, you know, a lot of gun camera stuff. So those tanks are, you know, relative to a helicopter, they're slow, yeah. and they're and they're in the open, and they don't go through the jungle; they go down roads. Yeah. You know, so tanks are always vulnerable to air power. Yeah, you just have to be aware of that when you're trying to build those forces up to do spearhead. You got to be really. Yeah, you're gonna lose. You got to plan. You're gonna well. lose guys. Yep. You're gonna lose guys. That's why you keep the tanks back where they, there are no spotters, spotters yep. until you can yeah. do something, move and do, move and act. One of the big things about this game, it's called, the expense is called the Fall of Saigon, and you cannot win without controlling Saigon. I felt like in the in the normal kind of campaign, very difficult to wrest that away from coin control, but in this one, you have to do it. Um, and with a dramatic close. Very, Absolutely. very much so. So Dan played as the Arvin. I want you to walk us through kind of your strategy there and how that kind of played out. Let us know what that's like. I'm a virgin coin player, so my strategy was, uh, what do I do, Mark? Please help me. <laughs> that was my strategy. But if you can't, if you got to take Saigon to win, I just thought, look, I'm going to forget what the North up here and just bring all my forces there and just like make it hard for you to win. And you know, that's that. Now, so the first thing that you're going to hear is that's not historical. Absolutely. Actually, it's incredibly historical. At the end of the war, two 
as I've told many people, Vietnam is three countries aligned along cultural and common-ish kind of language. So you've got Tonkin in the north, you got Amman, which is the Central Highlands, and you know, Hue was really the capital of that. And you had Cochin China, which is the south. Two was Cochin China. And so he gave the order, you know, well documented, to give up Hue, Da Nang, First Corps, Second Corps, and pull everybody Focus back into the Encore and try to hold on to Saigon and the Mekong, which is his country. And in, re in the real war, it didn't go so well. He didn't get them back in time, and it all fell apart. In this one, you can do the same strategy, but you might do better. However, you're giving up all these points, so the NDA could, that's how the NDA gets a lot of quick leverage, and then, you know, you got, and again, once you get within artillery range, the bombard is very powerful. Yep. You know, you start shelling the city, and so you saw how quickly you could knock down those cubes. So, oh, yeah. so I, I, triple A. So I don't, I think actually what will happen is, as I, sometimes there's rules that you don't need a rule. You know, do it, if it works for you, good, but I already can see where I doubt it's going to work in and of itself. Like, you can't just put everybody in Saigon and that's going to win you the game. I, I can see already that's not going to win you the game with the tanks. Yes. Yeah, there's, you've got to hold on to other areas and, and you got to keep force the NBA well, to do other things. No, you got to keep the NBA from being adjacent to Saigon. So, yeah, no effectively, shot. you got to fight for this area. And if, therefore, if you put everybody here, you're just letting the, the NDA pile up next to you, then, you know, one, with one move, one resource, they all just come in yeah, and yeah. you're going to lose. Yes. So, I think it's one of those, it's self writing. Other things that I think are really neat of this is uh, there's a whole new set of the pivotal event cards, yes. which come out after the Paris Peace Accords. Yeah, I mean, uh, so we had um, retrenchment, so you get a whole bunch of, um, you know, it's it's the ability to create this enclave down here. That's his pivotal event. Then you had a popular mobilization. You get like a lot of troops real quick. Yes. Popular mobilization. Then the, the NDA in essence get another seventy. Get the historic offensive they had. Basically, out of free march and assault kind of stuff. And the Americans have the um, the infamous uh, enforce the treaty yeah, uh, accords in force, which means once per coup card. I, and this one's a re, this is a returning card. I get to bomb them a lot. That you always feels good, right? Yep. Or bad, bomb. depending on who you are. <laughs> so the Americans kind of go, "Hey, you're cheating." Boom. You know, they come yeah. back in. And how many cons does the expansion come with? So there will be, well, there's 79 cards, which is 24 cards for 73, 24 for 74, 24 for 75, four new coup cards, and three no three coup cards and four pivotal events is what you get. All new stuff. And you guys, what did you guys think of the events when you read through all of them? Oh, I, I'd love to read through every one of them, but there were some really interesting events in there. Oh, yeah, for there's, sure. there's stuff that was, it enhances what you're doing with your new tanks. Yeah. A lot of them are focused on the posture, which is cool. It can be a, very, a big tug of war. And then a lot of stuff I noticed that was, you know, kill the patronage, get a ton of patronage, kill the aid, yeah. get a ton of aid. Yeah, yeah actually, I think one of the significant ones that I played to help uh, Dan, that was the Americans, was that huge age package I yeah, was able to get like, out of Congress. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely the events are cool. It, it'd be interesting to look at the history of those, or just like we always do, to try to learn something about the Congress. Yeah, I did, so. I did a, a fair amount of reading. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, a lot of, you know, I love doing that stuff, so. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I mean, one of the best parts about these games is learning. Yes. I always like to learn the history, the event, you know, what happened. And so, with, the, with the events, you mentioned kind of drafting some cards into the yeah. deck to help kind of balance and when, it out. Again, I'm still, I'm still working it, you know, yeah, so yeah. I don't want to be, able, but like I said, 80% just the scenario, I mean, the rules are pretty set, but the scenario and the victory conditions, so one of the things I'm realizing is, you know, and, and again, it's just, look, it's just like in the base game, there's an even distribution of first, second, third, and fourth, yeah. but you know, anytime you're randomizing, so one of the things I want to introduce is each player for each year, so you got eight cards, every player can draft one card into those eight cards and there's four random. This way you get a little bit of control of what will happen. Uh, so I think that'll be fun. And you know, and that way you're going to get main battle tanks and you know, things like, like some that. Some of those are pretty important. Though. Yeah, that's what I've come to believe. Yeah. 
So I know this has got about a year's worth more of play testing. Yeah, we're gonna it's gonna go P500 in August. Maybe it'll take six months for it to hit its number. <laughs> I think about six minutes. Yeah. Uh, well, somewhere between those two is the truth. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then you know, Volko and I do our usual thing. We're you know getting a lot of people to play it. We're gonna. I'm gonna but I had to say, you know, this has been a great. Uh, WBC is a great. My favorite convention. I've been coming here probably 30 out of the 35 or 36 years I've been running. And. You know, but as Jim Dunnigan once told me, you have to play your own game. So I got to play this heavily here, and every time I played it, I've made, you know, initially a lot of, you know, serious adjustments, and now I'm starting to feel like, okay, I'm getting, in, you know, it's not there yet, but the circle is getting smaller. Just some fine tuning, probably. Well, still a couple of course corrections, and, yeah. and I've also got to bring Volko into the conversation. He's going to have awesome ideas as always. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm going to be driving home tomorrow. Uh, back home from WBC, and I'll have Vocal on the phone, and we'll be talking. I'm sure he'll approve of every single one of your changes. <laughs> I mean, one of, every one of your proposed changes, right? <laughs> Improvements. They haven't been already done. <laughs> Hang on, we're, we're taping actually. <laughs> well, let's, let's. More alcohol is being delivered. Thank God. <laughs> Come on, give me, give me, give me, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Be out of there. Yeah, I'm a, I don't drink at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you sitting down and Absolutely. showing oh, us. Oh no, this. I, I can't tell. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys playing. Yeah. I've had a wonderful afternoon and evening with you guys. So, good time. As always, it's our pleasure. Believe me. Thanks yes. for teaching me. Good time. Yeah. So look for this one coming at some point, probably towards end of next year. I think it'll be out. I would say this will be out by next WBC. Okay. I think that's a fair. Or maybe no pressure. Or it'll be in 2020. No, that'll be too soon. Okay. In 2020. 2020. Yeah. After the election, Christmas time. <laughs> who knows? But yes, very excited for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You'll probably see more about this coming from the future from us. Uh, thanks, Mark, for showing to us. Thanks, Dan, for playing with us. And thanks for tuning in.